If nothing else, this prepares them for the NBA. You can ask Pomp. Loves that mid-game interview, let alone halftime. Again, a six-point difference at the half. Legends could cut that down to three here. Dorsey. A lob to the rim and the flush from James Banks the third. Man, we're going to get to see the highlight here in a second, but we're talking about Bassey and Banks are going to have a fun time tonight. Bassey had to be switched onto a smaller defender, and Banks took advantage with all that space under the rim. Good rotation with nine to shoot. The Spurs one and done. Right. And clearly was in geometry class. Figures out the angle there off the glass. And that Spurs 12-point lead is down to two. Ball poked away but lands right into the arms of your prototypical three-point shooter. Six-foot-nine, Charles Bassey drains it. First three of the season for Bassey, and you know if he can develop that three, it's going to really open up his game. And straight to the hole with the strong take there is G, doing what six-foot-nine guys typically do. He's a bit light in his frame, but I think that helps him really elevate. Kuzi sheds a couple of defenders. Bassian for the closer look. Can't get that one to knock down. Again, 67th all-time meeting between these two teams. It's been pretty even. 34 have gone to Austin. 32 have gone to Texas. They'll meet tonight and tomorrow night. Yeah, you see another look at that G dunk. But it's been a fun game with plenty of highlights both ways all night. And you talk about this being an evenly matched team, although the roster is very different from last year. They were 2-2 two and two when they played each other in four games last year. So obviously that doesn't mean too much to the guys playing now, but the Mavericks and the Spurs are a fun rivalry. So is it here in the G League? Lob down low, it's G. Who's going to be called for the foul and a free throw coming up. Battle of the big men in midair. And no, they're going to bring this out. They'll say it was on the pass and Bassey didn't have possession of the ball, but that could have been a highlight reel play if it was just a little closer to Bassey's hands on the pass. Kuzi's kick to Attaway. Nine to shoot for Austin as they maintain possession. Two on two. Hardy stumbles, just lobs one around the rim, and the Legends unable to salvage that trip down. Spurs hanging on to a three point lead. Kuzi off the glass. And Kuzi with the Spurs by way of being an affiliate player. Offensive rebound for Kuzi, the former Gale from St. Mary's. Kick out to Johnson. And I believe we did finally... I, don't, I still don't know if I've seen the thumbs or not. I, I saw a jump ball signal from our far official, and, and that will be what they call it. They wanted to double check the shot clock. They'll keep it at 12. Stays with Austin. More on that shot clock in a moment. Attaway, the kick out to Brown. From downtown, it is off that back iron. It won't go. Chance to pull within two. Oh, nice discipline defensively by Brown, not leaving his feet. When Wright slammed on the brakes, and it's a strong take and finish from the former Texas Longhorn, James Banks. A 
moment ago with that jump ball, our officials do a nice job coming to the scores table, reminding them, depending on who wins that jump ball, where the shot clock needs to be. It is not a reset shot clock regardless. As Goldwire will come back on for Kuzi. Yeah, it stayed at 12, but if the Spurs had won the tip, gotten clear possession, it would have been Spurs' possession with 12 seconds left. Instead, the Legends had a brief moment where they had possession, it restarted, then they turned it over, and that's what it'll go down as a box score, and Spurs were able to come away with the possession there, and good job by Alze Johnson to draw a foul, and he'll get another chance here on a lane violation. That lane violation will renew this free throw, and that's a costly one. I guess Banks hit the lane a little bit early. And Texas just can't get out of their own defensive half. And I'll tell you what, that's the third team foul. So if the Spurs are smart, they're going to just keep trying to force the issue and getting the penalty, or the bonus I should say, with plenty of time left in this third quarter. Gee will come off. Brown with another two-point free throw. And Spurs struggling on their past few from the line. They're leaving a lot of points at the line. Transition opportunity, and it's going to be a free throw opportunity now for the visitors. As McKinley Wright with the nice take, he'll be rewarded here. Finished with a lot of scoring records at Colorado in addition to the all-time assist man. Most point and assist double-doubles in Colorado history as well. And a bit undersized, but he has everything else that you want out of a point guard. Of course, uh, Derek White spent a year in Colorado. Chauncey Billups had a pretty good NBA career. Any other buffs come to mind? And Boulder is a fun place to go to college, but they're not necessarily known for draft prospects. Those are those are the first two that come to mind. I'm sure there's been a few more. Derek White was only there for his senior year. Remember, he played Division II basketball before that. Actually needed his NBA rookie contract to pay off his student debt from those years before he went D1 in Colorado. Not a stat they keep track of, but I'm sure he was one of very few players that had student loans. Led the Austin Spurs to their second G League title in 2018. It's a three-on-one break. The punctuation, the hammer slam from Alizé Johnson. And that all starts with the outlet pass from Charles Bassey. He did a great job reading to where Johnson was going to go and hit him in stride. Johnson with the swipe on the other end to get Texas out of a rhythm. And it's Johnson on both ends getting the job done. Quick feed to the corner. Won't go for Brown. Give me some folks reaching out to Bruce Bowen about how to knock down that corner three or perhaps just go to the GM, Brent Berry. But moments ago, three on one, one on none. And a night that's had a lot of highlight real dunks. Alizé might have come away with the early play of the night. The 26-year-old returning player this year. As Hardy knocks down the free throw. And the Legends, despite some fireworks from Austin, are back within one. Goldwire with some space on that left side. Chance to take the lead here with Dorsey. Goes right at Johnson, and it's the Legends who have erased a 12-point deficit and are up by one. Timeout, Austin Spurs with 7.04 to go in the third, 68-67. George Galanopoulos really has his team playing hard, and I think, you know, you, you go back at the start of this game, they're a smaller team, and that's been part of the thing that you want to do if you're a smaller team. Push that break, get a lot of fast break opportunities, or at least play faster, and you see all this full court defense, that plays into it as well. It would appear the sugar rush from Halloween is still going strong into this Friday night. Goldwire right now has Wright glued to him. Bassey has already knocked down one triple. 
Bassey from 13. Spurs back up by one. Bassey does a great job re-screening and then rolling to the basket for a floater, but you're right. He turned down a three off of the stagger screens. Next time around, I think that he's going to be a little quicker on the three-point shot and try and get that off to get an extra point on his field goal attempt. Just a ball out of bounds on Austin. 15 to shoot for the visitors from Frisco. Great defensive effort by Alizé Johnson on this play. One to shoot. Dorsey fires one up, draws iron, but nothing more. The rebound by Attaway. Alizé Johnson helped in the paint, then got back to his man on the corner, then picked up the switch and made that a really tough three-point shot And at the end of the shot clock buzzer to boot. Nine to shoot for Brown from the corner. And a foul on the strip effort from Hardy. They tell you as a big man not to bring that ball down because small guys like Hardy will get a swipe at it, but a lot of forearm this time around, and Bassey draws the foul. And We talked about the Legends being in the penalty. That's the fourth team foul, so every team foul here, from here on out, the Spurs will be shooting a free throw for two points the rest of the third quarter. Yeah, I think it was back when the Admiral was banging in the postseason down low with uh, the dream that you'd always hear Anytime one of those guards was feeding them around the ankles, that's of no good. You got a couple seven-footers out there. Throw it up where only they can get to it. Game was a lot more physical back then, too. Guards didn't like to play in the paint because uh, the ref will say, yeah, you know, I'd avoid all that contact down there. Nowadays, they protect the smaller players, but glad to see they still look out for the big guys, too, on swipes like that. 12 to shoot for Austin. As the ball stripped away from Barlow. Legends can go back up by one. That would match their largest lead so far. And a foul away from the basketball. As this one's going to be on Goldwire on the screen. Yeah, we might get another look at that. But it's uh, I think that's a tough one for Goldwire. Because he's trying to navigate the screen here by Inzacore and I think Instacourt moves a little bit because he rescreens, and, you know, like I talked about, it's one or two steps. Goldwire didn't quite get that, and I think you've got to give him benefit of the doubt and at least make that a no call moving forward. Josh and Zeke, or the former Lamar Cardinal, played his college ball over in Beaumont in East Texas. He was just added to the roster this week as a season-ending injury for one of the players, freed up a roster spot, and Zeke played 10 games this year down in Mexico. Briefly had a cup of coffee, one game with the Memphis Hustle last year. Goldwire assessing his options. Still plenty of time to shoot. Spurs up by one. Brown runs into a legend sandwich, somehow works his way out of it, and gets a pair. Spurs still pounding in that paint, and, you know, those are the higher percentage shots. So you see them do a good job keeping the Legends at arm's length after giving up that lead. Hardy determined to get to the rim. Will they count the bucket? They do. And one coming up. And I think this is where the Legends need to turn to Hardy. When the going gets tough, give it to your best scorer. He has a lot of experience in this league, and that's great finish through contact of Barlow. Leading scorer tonight, the one player on assignment, Hardy from the Mavericks. He's been on a string this week, being yo-yoed back and forth between Dallas and Texas. Yeah, I had to call to confirm that he was going to be brought up and, you know, uh, happy to see him down here and get a chance to see one of the best young talents in the G League this evening. I won't pretend there was a flight involved, but probably are enough direct flights from either Dallas Airport to Austin to get him here had it been late notice. Yeah, big shout out to Brittany Wynn, the PR person with the Legends for letting me know he'll be down here. We're going to down low. Offensive putback is good. Second chance points for Dominic Barlow, the 19-year-old. 
Nice second effort by Barlow. Sometimes it's hard to get off the ground that quickly, but you see the quick second hop, and that's how we got that offensive board and a lot of space to get that shot off. You figure teenagers who work around the perimeter are going to have an easier job transitioning to the NBA than a big man. Fighting off contact, count the bucket. Legends probably wanted an and one. Josh and Zeker with two points. We've seen him in Argentina, Africa, Germany. One of those is a continent. The other two are countries. Long-range stroke is good for Jalen Attaway. Attaway was one of those surprise starts to match with the three-guard lineup, and he's really earned that starting role this evening, being a surprise scorer and helping the Spurs out on the scoreboard. Hardy crosses himself up. Bailed out by Baba. Two to shoot from the corner. Good. Got their money's worth out of the shot clock. Tyler Hall able to bury that one. And conversely, Tyler Hall cracks into double figures. He's been a big spark off the bench for the Legends. With 15 to go in regulation, we are tied at 76. There will be some games this year. This is your halftime score. And as the Spurs won and done. Both coaches will go to their bench. We will go to a commercial break. 2.53 to go here in the third. I must say, I uh, always enjoy some of the tunes they play out here. Seventy-six points apiece inside the final three minutes here of the third quarter. The game where the Spurs have led by as many as 12. The Legends only briefly have led by one here in this period. And contact along the baseline during that shot. And it's a free throw coming up for Olin Carter, the third. First personal for Kyer here as he fouls the four-year product from San Diego. Carter with the Legends last year. A couple of starts and 14 appearances. Averaged almost 11 points. Before that, began his pro career in Spain and Serbia. And we have another clock issue coming on the inbounds play. That's one of the cool things about basketball, especially here in the 21st century, is you really do have an international flavor. A lot of these players, you know, are mostly American, but they spend a lot of time all over the world, and basketball's just grown to that level of popularity. Who would have thought a Canadian who made it in Springfield, Massachusetts in 1891 spreads around the world? Of course, Petar Bozic, second-year head coach of the Spurs, is from Serbia. He follows... The last head coach for the Spurs from over there on that island continent of Australia. Good old Matt Nielsen on the bench now from the Spurs. We were talking about opportunities for these guys before Matt Nielsen. Blake Ahern now an assistant with Memphis. Yeah, Ahern from the country of Missouri. Uh, feed to the youngster. Unable to knock that one down. What a rise for Blake Ahern, the career NBA G leaguer. Of course, back then, the D-League. Coached one year of high school before the Spurs brought him in. He led Derek White and company to that 2018 title. As the popular vote here in the arena disagrees with this call, but it looked to be right. And Tough it, one there, and I think it was more because the foul was on the dribble, and now they're just going to sort of make up, call it on the block shot, and... You know, Dominic Barlow, young guy, 19 years old, getting his first run in the G League. Sometimes that's going to happen. That is not going to be worth a challenge from his head coach. No. So legends inch out ahead. Their largest lead of the night up by a two. I do always enjoy when players ask to challenge a play that's really not that consequential. Kuzi. Goes to the big man down low, and he'll pick up an easy assist as Bassey able to drop it through. Not that Barlow has to be uh, reviewed right there, but, you know, there's a cool thing about that challenge coming into the NBA from the G League. A tad strong from Baba. 
I think has his own traveling cheering section here. Kuzi able to lose his defender. Can't make him pay. Here's Bamba. That was a look, no look pass. Style points to say the least as he finds Josh and Zekro. And the Legends have their largest lead of the night now. Borderline insurmountable. <laughs> Emphasis on the borderline. Murphy, spin move, finish with the left. Back within. Well, I think there's going to be a little confusion on the score. Right now we are level at 80. We'll get it all sorted out eventually, but it's been a fun second half already. Mahoney for three. Too strong. Gets his own miss, and he'll pick up the assist. It's Mahoney to Bassey. These players have not had a lot of time together. But some things just come naturally. Those long rebounds, especially those just bare misses off the inside of the rim, really have translated to fewer seven-footers in the league and more combo forwards, and nice job by Mahoney to know where his teammate was off that offensive board. A second and a half separates the two clocks. And the Spurs will have a chance here, possibly for the final look. From midcourt off the glass. And we are headed to quarter four. Level, 82 points apiece through the first three periods of play in this brand new G League campus for the Winter Showcase to wrap up the Showcase Cup. Again, in the last week of December, all the records will reset as we'll then begin the journey to the G League playoffs. But right now, all this part of the G League Showcase Cup. Again, Delaware won last year in the Showcase. RGV won the G League crown in the spring. Six teams during that G League season in the spring will make it to the playoffs from each conference. And we don't have a loose ball, but we have a loose whistle. Kuzi. Eight ties, four lead changes. We're in the midst of that eighth tie right now. Baba was hoping to get the ball. No need to the finish from Riller. 84-82, Texas. Kuzi off the glass. He's starting to heat up, but can keep your drink cold all at the same time. Yeah, he gets your stable figures, and he's one of those guys that had two training camps with the Spurs, one in San Antonio and one in Austin. Oh, nice feed to Baba on the back door baseline. Cozy with the screen from 14. Little shot put won't go. And Dorsey, little hip to hip contact with Kyer, draws the foul. Second foul on Kyer. Nothing to be concerned about. First team foul for either team this fourth quarter. It hasn't come back to bite either team yet but they've been flirting with being in the penalty both teams obviously having a couple times where they've had a team foul lead to free throws even if it wasn't in the act of shooting but that could be the difference this evening if somebody's able to get into the bonus earlier again because there's only one free throw they do allow for the substitution here before the free throw is taken Gee comes on to add size for Baba See the numbers for Dorsey. All this is a very limited sample size when we talk to you about season stats so far for these two teams. And come the new year, all these stats will be forgotten. Attaway. 
Bassey just wanted it more than everybody else. Shot clock at eight. Cozy a little dribble off his right shoulder. Bassey with the flush. And this is why sometimes you don't necessarily want your seven-footer to be a three-point shooter. He could have faded out to the winger or the top of the key several times. Instead, Bassey stays involved in the play in the paint both times and makes an impact with an offensive rebound and then a dunk. Mahoney with the foul, second team foul on Austin. As you get another look. Fight through that screen and sometimes your hand goes where you don't necessarily want it to go. Through traffic. Adway will wait for some numbers for support. Or so I thought. The man needs no support that time. Strong take from Adway for two. And we are tied at 88 now. And give Adaway 18 on the night. He's been a very good surprise showing off some of his scoring and athleticism this evening. And we've got bodies flying everywhere. Fighting for a possession in a tight ball game. And I was, as I was mentioning earlier, the team foul situation, just three seconds under ten minutes left in the fourth. Hardy with two for the Austin Spurs. they got to be careful. Make sure they don't pick up a third very early. And before the inbounds play, an offensive foul on Tyler Dorsey. That won't go down as a team foul, as still none for the Legends, but every possession is going to be big here in this fourth quarter. Spurs do a good job getting the turnover thanks to the offensive foul, fighting through screens and such. All these guys for the past few years have seen the NBA All-Star game with that target score. They just want to be a part of it. Here in the G League. Spurs are back up by three thanks to the triple. A block on the other end from the big man, Bassey. Already has one triple tonight, foregoes that look. Hands off to Attaway. They wanted to give it back, and a great job breaking up the alley oop. But then it's Bassey finally having the ball sent his way. Timeout, George Kalinopoulos and the Texas Legends. As the Spurs, courtesy of the big man. Facing the floor, you can really start to build on those building blocks with his athleticism and rebounding skills. And then Charles Bassey, just what a debut for him with Austin. 25 points and just been a force. He's been asking for a lob almost every time down the court. Can't wait to see him get some highlight reel finishes for Austin. Shot blocked by Attaway. It's a foot race. And a goaltending. We'll give Attaway the two. Is doesn't matter what league you're playing in. And, Gee, a little late to that one. And Attaway gets the block right there, and they didn't want to give him the satisfaction of the block and the score. Just a little late on that, the very end. 20 points for Attaway, by the way. He's having a stellar first game in Austin as well. Legends pull back within five. Goldwire. Well, mid-range shot won't go down. Petar Bozic will go back to his bench in a moment. And that's goaltending as well. That's a little tougher call, but... Very that ball was about apex. two-thirds of the way. It was a line drive shot. But you imagine it was already on its way back down. Bassey was to show off his hang time here, though. He gets up, and, you know, that's so close that had he been just a fraction of a second earlier, would have been clean, and that one won't go down on the stat sheet. Petar Bozic did look at the big video board to see if it was anything obvious to challenge. It's a moot point now. It'll rattle home for Goldwire. His second bucket of the night, he's got four points. Banks takes out his own teammate with friendly fire. And rejected from behind is Banks. Bassey locking down the paint all night here as Austin defends their basket really well. And you'll get a look at it. He really quickly rotates over there to Banks, and Banks steps out of bounds on the recovery. 
Spurs with a chance to build on a five-point lead. They've led by as many as 12 tonight. Have trailed by a pair back in the third quarter. Goldwire waiting for somebody to pick him up. He knocks it down. Goldwire with four of his six points here in the fourth quarter, and he's showing he's not scared to shoot it if they give him the opportunity. Right for three, good. That pulls Texas back within two shots, down by four. Attaway into the paint. Spurs one and done the other way with Dorsey. He's got numbers, calls his own number. And the follow-up slam from James Banks the third. Nice job to run to the rim there by Banks. He knew that he was there to clean it up if that shot didn't go. Attaway takes a bump from Hardy. That does not go unnoticed. As the foul on Jaden. And Zekor and Hall will return for both Banks and Gee. Well, look at that follow slam. Both of these teams want to get an early start in this Showcase Cup play. They want to be part of that single elimination tournament in Vegas. I also think it's cool that the G League Ignite moved to Vegas this year. Yeah, they're in Henderson, Nevada. As Mexico City also will have a full schedule this year. Down low. And a nice finish from Inziker, who knows exactly where he's planted underneath that rim. That would have been a tall ask for Bassey to go back and get that one in midair. But the legends bail out the Spurs here. You see why he's one of these highly touted prospects. Most seven-footers can't also get eye level with the rim. And, man, if uh, he weren't fouled, he might have been able to finish that. Yeah, and they're saying that he was bumped off of his spot. The reason why he goes to the line here. Interesting thing to see this year, though, is it does seem like there's some opportunities for him to shoot some threes if he's comfortable with it. He was 6 of 21 last year with Delaware, and I imagine that's an opportunity that the Spurs want him to develop if he feels comfortable on the shot. You don't want to shoot a three for the sake of shooting a three, but, man, that size and athleticism and a three-point shot, Bassey, he's going to be a fun one to watch. He's got 29 points in his debut here tonight. And after his first three attempted tonight, he was shooting a 1,000. Now that has cooled off a bit. On the opposite end, free throw coming up here. Mentioned it earlier that the Spurs picked up two quick fouls in the first two minutes of this fourth quarter. That's the only their third one here almost four minutes later. So Austin did a good job realizing that they had to calm down so they're not in the penalty. Right, able to knock it down for two. Again, signed a two-way contract this year with the Mavericks. Goldwire screen from Barlow. Kicks down to Mahoney. That's the way he draw it up. How about a second bite of the apple? Eight to shoot. Brown around Baba. 16-footer good. Brown able to connect the former Michigan man as Austin back up by four. And that's the Spurs for you. Everybody on the court's a threat to score. Brown, who was the first trade for Brent Barry this summer as the Spurs GM, Austin's first GM, that is. He's up with 13 points. Hardy throws one into traffic, and I'm not sure what we witnessed was basketball. But a shot clock violation in the end. Looked like Alizé Johnson had been hogtied for a moment when he was trying to retrieve a loose ball. But in the end, it's back over to the silver and black. And that is a rare shot clock violation in the G League, and you have to credit the Spurs defense there. 5-17 remaining in regulation. 
Spurs looking to expand their lead to possibly a three possession lead. Goldwire draws contact, able to finish nonetheless. Baba the other way, had that great reverse earlier, but this time loses the handle. Around Barlow and a nice take with the left hand from Hardy. Wouldn't be surprised to see Hardy get some more opportunities to create. He's up to 17 points, and he's one of the best scorers in the G League based off last year. Hardy, the second youngest player in this ballgame tonight, the 20-year-old. As you just saw, the youngest, Barlow, fire that one up, but off the mark. Hardy stops, pops, gets it to drop for three. Back with Hoon one come the legends, just north of four minutes to play. That green light I was talking about, Coach Galanopoulos is going to rely on Hardy to carry the team here in the final four minutes offensively. Goldwire with some help from the teenager. And a sprint the other way. And a flex off in the end from right. He's got to be careful. But a timeout, Spurs, as the legends are back in the driver. DeBull. That guy does not age. And I think he still is the only mascot in G League history that has received a technical foul. So, you know, I think that's going to continue but not happen again. That might predate the Texas Legends. <laughs> I think it does. I think that might have been before the Spurs officially owned yeah. the team. It might be just before or just after it. DeBull was part of a player to be named later. Step in for the two. Won't go. Battle for the offensive rebound goes to Legends, ripped away by Tyler Hall. Three and a half minutes, Legends with a chance to grow their lead. A field goal here gives them their largest advantage of the night. Right with the crossover. Again, if we go to overtime, the new policy this year in the G League, it would be a target score. First team to tack on seven in that overtime period would win. But right now, we've still got 3.02 to avoid the extended period of play. Yeah, this loose ball foul here will keep possession for the Austin Spurs. Yeah, Alize just pushed off his mark by Hardy. Kuzi, 11 to shoot for Austin. And may have been guilty of an offensive foul. They'll settle for a travel as he threw that right elbow. By the way, a turnover. Again, it will not count. Well, it's not a foul. That's one reason why it won't count as a team foul, but otherwise, just a turnover. But we were talking about it earlier, all the way back around the eight-minute mark, if I'm not mistaken. Every possession is huge here. It's coming down to the wire, Lincoln. Three team fouls for both teams. We are inside of three minutes. And about 45 seconds, free throws will diminish in value. Eight on the shot clock. Another look. And Bassey. Man, he had a goaltend earlier. Wasn't going to be yeah. denied there. Hardy. A step back from the three-point line won't go. Offensive rebound here for Banks. And it's a Baba reverse. As he dips into that move for a second time. Udai has that down. There was a wide open season ticket holder, but too shy to take the shot. As the Legends are going to go back down the floor, their largest lead tonight, albeit just three, with a chance to build on it here. Tough tape moment right there because on that baseline drive, you usually have your shooter drift to the baseline as well. So this way, those live ball turnovers don't happen at the wing. And Alize just thought that he had Bassey open on the wing as an outlet. Follow-up slam. It's a two-score lead courtesy of James Banks the third. Timeout, Austin, with two minutes to go. 
Great to finally have the G League campaign back. So many familiar faces. Feels like we just left the arena the other night, even if it was this past spring. So many familiar faces, but so many new faces, and those new faces bring a lot of excitement to the team. You talk about Hardy and Bassey being great players. They're a lot of fun to watch tonight. Spurs one and done, and Baba avoids the turnover from Texas. Chance to build on a five-point lead. Hardy goes right at Kuzi. And did Kuzi have a defensive posture? It's going to be a defensive foul. I think this might be the time for Petar Bojas to use his challenge because I think Hardy lowers his shoulder here, and that should be an offensive foul. But, you know, Kuzi was moving his feet. That's not necessarily the rule because lowering your shoulder right into the defender should be an offensive foul. But Petar, in this sense, will keep his finger in his pocket and not allow that to be a review, although it's tempting, I'm sure. There probably wasn't much to lose by asking for the review there. Would have been a borderline call. Likely would have stayed with what was initially determined to be a, a defensive foul. Kuzi hesitation. No hesitation from Bassey. He knows what to do. Got to get a stop here if you're Austin. Trailing by five. And Wright able to maintain his balance and work around Bassey. It's great confidence from your two-way player there. And not saying that's the nail in the coffin, but it certainly makes this really hard for Austin. Spurs are one and done. And they may very well see this opener slip away after they led the bulk of this contest. James Banks III thought perhaps he should be looking at an and one at the line after being kind of bumped off the baseline. We keep it here with 50. Are here in the G League, and you see a really high-level brand of basketball every night. Well, tomorrow's crowd is going to be looking a little different, even if the teams look the same. It'll be Marvel Superhero Night. Some pretty attractive ticket packages that included a ticket here in Cedar Park to go watch the new Black Panther movie. Uh, right now, fans are hoping to see a comeback from Austin with just inside 45 seconds to go, trailing by nine. Biggest discrepancy in favor of the visitors tonight. And Banks will force this jump ball and... We talked about the shot clock earlier. I believe it should be reset to five here, although it's taking a moment. So this way, if Austin wins possession, I, maybe I'm wrong about that rule, I suppose. It'll only be 3.9. And despite a height discrepancy, they'll tip it out. Kuzi was mindful of the clock, and they failed to reset. Yeah, that is... They'll give it to him. The Spurs shouldn't be penalized for no. the, the shot clock malfunction, obviously. It should have reset. And, you, you know, if he had taken one dribble, maybe not. But just a really good job by Brown to get that quick shot up. And now they have to get a stop. They count the bucket. It was a false buzzer as the shot clock should have reset. And this might be a good old-fashioned free throw battle down the stretch. Free throws now worth one apiece. Kuzi wasn't necessarily looking to foul there, but the soft foul will be called, and McKinley Wright can pretty much put this away. 22 points tonight for McKinley Wright. Now matches the number on the back of his shirt. Now the Spurs are hoping for a three for one. The only instructions from Coach Gianopoulos is do not give up a three pointer. They do not. Shot clock is turned off. Legends would welcome being able to simply dribble out this clock. The Legends trailing throughout the bulk of this one, though never by more than 12. 
come back, claim a lead in the fourth quarter, and the Texas Legends will begin their journey here in this new G League campaign at 1-0. and These two teams back at it tomorrow night, 7.30 Central Time. As we'll be right back here at the 8.